wherever you are, lift your hands. Open your mouth and just bless the Lord one more time. Let your worship resound from your spirit. Worship is a response to the revelation of God's love, to the revelation of the person of the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth, eyes closed everywhere, and in 60 seconds, lift your voice and just magnify Him. Don't let your neighbor do your worship for you. Don't let your neighbor do your worship for you. Lord, we love you. No one beside you. We reverence you. We reverence you. We reverence you. We reverence you. Hallelujah. John chapter 16 verse 24 says, He that who have you not asked, ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. I know that we came tonight to encounter God. I know that we are right here in His presence and there's so much that God will do. But in the next few minutes, I would want you to raise your voice passionately and call upon the God of Israel. The Bible says, ask that you will receive so that your joy will be full. God wants to increase our joy beyond measure and he wants to do it by satisfying our needs tonight. And if you are here and you really came desperate for a touch from God, if you came because you know you want God to do something in your life, except if you came to look at a man, this is not about a man, this is about the king of kings. Nicodemus said, no man can do these things except God be with him. Tonight, it's not going to be about a man. It's not going to be about what men can do. It's about what God can do. I want you in the next five minutes to lift up your voice, raise a prayer of supplication to the Lord, and ask the Lord for a tangible visitation tonight. Everybody inside and outside, lift your voice and cry. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice to the God of heaven. Raise your voice and ask for a visitation. Ask for a visitation. Ask and you will receive so that your joy will be full. Come on, are there believers in the house tonight? Open your mouth and pray. This is a miracle service. Come on, I can't hear you pray. I can't hear the desperation in your prayer. Nombre de hela gobrine subaha. Zebranda baha brende babrusia. Zabel la bosso brondobehe. Le cobranda zana brandi. Sorobo grobonde le gebrenisi. Then my king believed that I was Are you praying? Inside and outside, make sure you are crying to God. Ela baraka bosia da mandi Le babo se babronde for my family for my life a visitation Come in your fullness and power Come in your own special way. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, 
sweet spirit, we pray. Please come in your strength and your power. Move in this place. Come in your own strength. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Father, tonight I pray for a visitation. I know you will touch us. I know you will do signs and wonders. I know you will do mighty miracles. I'm asking you, Lord, that you reveal your power and your glory. Move all over this auditorium and outside and even online. Shake every yoke from our lives. Manifest your greatness. Let your people know that you are God of gods and Lord of lords. And that you are alive forevermore. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. You're welcome to September Miracle Service. I thought you celebrate God for that. Hallelujah. You should do something with for your sound. It's too thick. Uh, God saw us through from February. I think the first miracle service was in February. March, April, May, June, July, August, and now September. And every of this edition has been mighty. It's been awesome and powerful by the workings of God and not a man. And I believe tonight that God will glorify his name in the name of Jesus. I want to say this. When you come to this place, I know the Bible says believe in his prophets. I understand the faith in a man. But when we come here, I don't want you to look towards a man. I also came here ready for God to touch me. I came here ready for God to visit me. So I don't want you to look at me and feel I'm the one that will do everything tonight. It's beyond me. It's the hand and the working of a mighty God. And tonight I want your hearts to truly be open to him. Your heart is open to him when you are focused and not distracted. Your heart is open to him when you fix your gaze on him. Expecting him tangibly except you came without an expectation. But if you came expecting God to do something, this may just be the service that will change your life forever. This may just be that service. This may just be that service where your word will come. We cannot predict the move of God, but we can tell when he moves. And I'm certain tonight, beyond every shadow of doubt, that God will do mighty things. In Jesus' name we pray. First of all, I bring us greetings from our Father in the Lord, Apostle Jonathan Shokonya. Amen. The President of Family Worship Experience International. Um, I had a good conversation with him this week, and he, he asked to personally convey his greetings. I want you to know that he's praying for us, and his spirit is here. And... Um, the Lord will glorify his name tonight in Jesus name I'm going to teach briefly I know this is a miracle service but I want to teach something the Lord laid on my heart at the middle of this week because for some of us your miracle is going to be by the diffusion of the knowledge of the word of God I believe in the manifestation of the power of God I believe in signs and wonders but I'm also convinced that the greatest miracle that can happen to a believer part time is the miracle of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge that comes from the word. The Bible says it is true knowledge that the righteous shall be delivered, not through prayer, not through any other thing, true knowledge. So I don't want you to be distracted. God is going to do great things tonight, I tell you, I tell you. Many of you will be wowed by what God will do tonight. In the name of Jesus. But just spare me a few minutes to 
bring the word of the Lord to us and I want you to listen attentively because for some of you this is where your change is amen and amen where's brother Paris he didn't come okay I wanted to specially pray for him I think today is his birthday or something okay he wedded yesterday so he's still doing his honeymoon <laughs> but adventure he's following online so God bless him wherever he is and his beautiful wife and all the September babies God bless you in the name of Jesus my younger sister was born today too amen so this is a special month amen and it is special because hmm, we are in a prophetic season where God is doing a lot and I believe that um, our experiences tonight will be a foretaste in the name of Jesus I'm sure you've been uh, for some of us who have been observing the news and what's going on well not all of us but for some of us who are interested what's happening around there's been a lot of jolting and shakings in the political um, cycle and um, I remember I don't know where I think it was at the breakfast prayer initiative and I don't know if I've said it in our service I said 2022 will be worst because there's going to be a lot of confusion in the political cycle now this morning the Lord showed me a vision of which I will just say a part and leave leave you to go and figure the details amen because these days DSS will pick anybody that says anything now um, I saw two major political parties and um, with a quest a fierce contest for leadership two major political parties and I saw a lot of confusion that is already going on and that will continue um, you are going to see a lot of confusion so we need to pray for our political leaders um, one of the party which seems to be the lesser party that is not in power uh, has one of the leaders trying to remain on the throne trying to see that he is um, he will continue as the leader of that party but based on what God showed me today that may not work are you following me so I'm speaking in parables so that you can go and figure everything out so he's trying to remain in position but it may not work I saw a lot of chaos and um, we need to pray that God will help them and then the other party that seems to be the bigger party um, a lot of people trying to contest for leadership and um, God will surprise everybody by the new leadership that will come up in that party because God wants to put an end to Godfatherism so there is one of them who is a Godfather and is from the north and I don't see him getting that position he shouldn't waste his money but he will waste his money anyway because they are blind they don't know that the Bible says that promotion comes not from the west south and east but God is the judge he exalts one and brings down another even if all the men in the world vote for you if God says no to you you are not going to remain there so um, if he could take my advice he shouldn't go for that position because God is true with him as far as the political cycle of Nigeria is concerned but he will waste his money and still fail amen but God wants to put an end to Godfatherism and bad governance in this country so we need to pray for the political cycle for peace amen and um, maybe I'll be coming time to time to tell us some things but that's where I'll stop for today amen so I leave you to go and figure out the rest don't come and ask me after the service amen because I don't want DSS knocking on my door amen I thought to share that with us because I may forget as we journey into the meeting because of the greater things that God will do 
all right keys to supernatural advancement that's what i want to share with us tonight briefly and then we'll pray i'll beg you to avoid distraction and avoid moving up and down amen please concentrate concentrate as much as you can remain where you are the spirit of god is moving in this place and you cannot tell your time of visitation amen keys to supernatural advancement now as far as life is concerned movement or motion is a foremost characteristics of uh, characteristic of living things everything that is living and alive must possess the quality of motion the ability to move amen and um, whether it is a business or an academic pursuit or a career or an individual a family or a nation there must be advancement there must be movement it is a sign that that entity carries life it is a sign that that entity has a future and so it is expected that you are able to move from one point in destiny to another point god has programmed it as far as life is concerned and uh, you know god is spelled g-o-d and i've said it before sometime that the first two letters g-o means that go is a going god god is a going god so god is a god of motion amen He's the only one who doesn't move, but he has created all things to experience notable positive motion. There must be a shift as far as your life or your destiny or business is concerned. It's a sign that you are growing. It's a sign that you have a future. It's a sign that you are on your way to achieving destiny. And so when things don't experience advancement, or when people don't experience advancement in the cause of life it actually denotes a sign of stagnation and there are things i want to tell us about stagnation when you have not advancing of course you know you are stagnant stagnation puts you at the risk of extinction if you remain stagnant at one point you are at the risk of being extinct in other words, you may fizzle out or fade out or suddenly be removed from the scene. Jesus said, any, any, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, any branch that beareth not fruit, what will happen? It will be cut down. So stagnation puts you at the risk of what? Extinction. Stagnation is also a sign of lack of growth and lack of life. When a business is not moving after a period of time positively making profit experiencing a level of influence or result within that geographical location it is a sign of stagnation and stagnation tells you that there is lack of life or lack of growth in that entity are we together you know, even science taught us about Newton's first and third law of motion. I think there are about three laws of motion. So Newton's first and third law is what I'm concerned about. I want to use it to interpret um, God's desire for every individual. Like I said, I want us to listen tonight because for some of us, this is where your miracle is. You need this knowledge. You need to know the keys. You need to know the principles. You need to know the mysteries in the kingdom that are available for you to make advancement at every point in destiny. It is not by mistake when people experience shift. No. Growth is not by mistake. It is, a del it is an outcome that is deliberate based on principles applied. Are we together? Newton's first law of motion states what? That a body or an object is at rest or will continue in motion until an external force is acted on it at rest means it remains in one point so everything that object has the ability to move to experience motion but it will remain there not because it wants to remain there but because there needs to be the activity of an external force 
that means for you to advance in life you need an added advantage you know the word advantage is two words in one at advantage additional vantage vantage means when you are at a point from whence you can see the horizon or experience um, you know or you can you, you can you can translocate from one point to another so it means being at the edge of life are we together then the third law says that for every action there is a reaction right that means that you instead of us waiting for God to come and do and you see this little problem this is the reason why a lot of people come for powerful meetings and they miss out in the move of God if you are outside and you can hear me please shout a big amen God bless you so people come for meetings or people come around anointed vessels of God and they just expect or as they journey through life they just expect that when they go through crisis or they go through situations God who is all-knowing should look at their situation and should just step in and deliver them no it doesn't happen like that for every action there is a reaction the heavens were made to react and respond to whatever happens on earth Jesus didn't say whatever you bind in heaven mm -mm. you can't bind in heaven because you don't have dominion in that realm your dominion is in the earth realm he said whatever you bind on earth is what bound in heaven so it may be God's will for that demon to be bound from his standpoint in your family but until somebody arises and legislates for God that demon will hold sway and you know one thing with Satan is he's always unrest he's always at unrest the Bible says he knows that his time is short so the little advantage or opportunity you give Satan he can wreck a lifetime havoc the Bible says except he said a strong man keepeth his house and puts his guards his goods the goods there because he's talking about the demonic now the goods there are people held captive families held in prison he said the strong man which is the devil keeps them safe and guarded he said but until a, until a stronger than him comes and overpowers him and sees his weapons now this is as I, that's that's an aside teaching for spiritual warfare that's the reason why the bible insists on us binding it's not just enough to overpower the enemy in the name of jesus but you must seize their weapons which they trust in he said until it's until it's stronger than him overpowers him and sees his armor his weapons from him then and only then can he spoil the goods of his house in other words then and only then that the stronger one can release the captives under that principality or under that demonic spirit you now see why our families seem to remain the way they are you are serving god you give your offerings and your tithes you come to church early you do all that you think you can and god is happy with that there is a blessing allocated for that but when it comes to advancing in the cause of destiny remember the bible says the path of the just is like what a shining light that shines brighter and brighter so it is god's will that for every season his children must make notable advancement but the situation remains the same why because we have not known that god waits to react to the actions that we take and if there are actions we must take it means that there must there are principles we must follow and that is what god wants to give us tonight before we begin to pray if you are with me say amen, amen. when you read deuteronomy chapter one god began to speak through moses by this time they had spent almost 40 years in the wilderness when you read deuteronomy chapter one verse six god told them through moses he said you have dwelt on this mountain for too long he said turn from hence and move forward and when you begin to read down that chapter i think in verse 8 it speaks about if god was giving them a charge to go and possess the land god didn't say they should claim 
are we together god said possess possess is a warfare term is a military term you cannot possess until you have contended with a force so even though it was a land that god had promised to them it was a land flowing with milk and honey it was their inheritance he made a covenant with abraham that he will give it to his seed this was theirs but god said it will not come to you except you contend for it and possess it the bible says upon mount zion there shall be what deliverance and holiness and the house of jacob will do what possess jesus said the kingdom of god suffered violent and the violence take at it the word take there is the word biazo in the greek it means to see something forcefully that means that if you must advance as far as life is concerned that means if you must make progress as far as your work with god is concerned even in the case of your work with god don't think that simply because you pray every day god will just come and begin to shift you to other realms no you must understand that these realms in the spirit are governed by spirit beings there is a dimension you get into in god you begin to face heavy adversity if you have not been there may god bring you there in jesus name it's a dimension you get to it's not witchcraft that will visit you it's the spirits that control the land that will be coming to do not the one that when when they come you say fire the mm -mm. the one that when they come they will stand and look at you say you the only thing is that they can't touch you you say fire they are standing there looking at you now that doesn't mean we don't have authority over them that it just means that you have advanced to a point where your warfare is no longer going to be with junior ranking demons you are going to be dealing with higher classes i heard a man of god said and this is very true that once if you are in any form of ministry in fact if you are having anything to do with anything that will make you influential once your voice is beginning to be heard in that land territorial spirits will come for you and i see a lot of young ministers in church who just want to be famous and influenced and they don't know that it is controlled by certain laws and spiritual agencies so you see that in deuteronomy chapter one god began to talk to them and give them the consciousness of the fact that they will have to fight their way through to possess in deuteronomy chapter two i think in verse three god told them again say you have dwelt on this mountain too long you have scattered around this mountain now that mountain when you read verse 14 was the mountain that was at kadesh benia the bible says they crossed over from kadesh benia to a place called zered and they stayed in that place for 38 years it was just a mountain in the wilderness in other words for 38 years they kept going in cycles so that means that satan can deceive a man or a family and make you think you are making advancement but you are just going in cycles you come right back to where it starts you get a job you stay in that organization for one year six months they sack you you become unemployed you come for another miracle service maybe a word comes and then you secure another job you go again for one year after one year there's conflict in the office and they retrench staff back to the same place you get another job you are able to stay there one year six months after one year six months you become very sick and then you have to resign or they retrench you you are back right where it started when you notice this pattern know that you are not making advancement you are going in cycles and there are many believers even here under the sound of my voice that their lives are described as this going in cycles you've been working in a place for five years each month you collect hundred thousand but you don't know what you have done with that hundred thousand for the last five years you are going in cycles now because the children of israel refuse to do what god asks them to do refused to engage the enemy when god wanted them to and refused to believe god's word god allowed them to continually go in cycles until that whole generation perished and then god spoke through moses in that verse 3 of chapter 2 he says you have dwelt around this mountain for too long 
when you read in verse 24 God began to talk to them about the enemies they will face in chapter 3 the Bible says they crossed over and they came to a place called Bashan and instantly a king named Og came out to attack them so you discover that every time you try to make advancement in life you are faced with adversity somebody say adversity say it one more time adversity just the way every time the children of God or the children of Israel tried to advance on their journey to the promised land they were faced with adversity adversity means enemies opposition and I want to tell us one thing in life there is no advancement without adversity your shifting to the next level is based on how you are able to overcome the adversity that is coming against you your moving to the next phase in life or in destiny is based on how you are this is what i call it i call it until you are able to challenge the challenge forget about making progress mm -hmm. because you call it a challenge oh this is the reason why i seem not to be growing in god my prayer life is not stable or every time i want to study the word i fall asleep or i have dreams and revelations and i don't understand and you've not cared to wait on the holy ghost to begin to teach you and explain to you oh every time i try to expand my business is either people defraud me or it becomes a loss until you decide to challenge the challenge that is a challenge you are listing now you are in between two options it's either you embrace the challenge and begin to give excuses and a man of god says if you give if you keep giving excuses you'll be excluded so it's either you embrace the challenge and give into stagnation and remember stagnation puts you at the risk of what extinction there is every tendency that even that place where you are content you can lose it the bible says let another take his bishopric is either you give in to that option or you decide to confront the challenge let me give you an example with some animals that face obstacles when a bull faces an obstacle it tries it tries to you know confront it or it tries to shy away with its horns when a fowl is that rain Please, those outside, let's try to just secure them somewhere. Amen. Father, we don't need this rain now. Father, we don't need this rain now. Let the clouds disperse to another place. In the name of Jesus. Let me continue my teaching. So, a bull, when he sees an obstacle, he tries to block the obstacle with his horn. When a fowl, a chicken, sees an obstacle before him, he shouts and raises alarm. You know that's what chickens can do. They can always shout. And there are people like that. He raises alarm, no help. And so he remains there. An ostrich sees an obstacle. He tries to hide with his feathers. It is only an ant, the smallest, that sees an obstacle and devises a way to go around it that means that in life it's not about size it's not a, a, about natural advantage it, first, it starts with the willingness to confront that obstacle hallelujah just be seated please no movement just allow the ushers to walk i was watching a message by johnson suleiman recently and he said life is not turn by turn or step by step life is what force by force <laughs> you know i like that man and his revelations life is what force by force so the world teaches us that you should wait for your turn and the man of god said there's nothing like wait for your turn after all the bible spoke about the man at the pool of Beth bethesda what was his excuse to jesus in john chapter 5 when jesus asked him do you want to be made whole he said there is no man to carry me into the pool 
You see excuses. He said, and even when I'm coming to the pool, when the water is dead, another gets in. That's why we say life is not turn by turn. If you keep waiting for your turn, the patient's dog is the fattest bone. It's a big lie. Fabricated in English. There's nothing like that. The patient dog will starve. Because there are other dogs that are not patient. If you are with me, say amen. That means that as far as making progress in life is concerned, it has a lot to do with your willingness to take it in your hands and decide to confront the challenge. When Jesus was sleeping in the sheep and they woke him up, there's, there were storm everywhere. Master, carry us not down. The disciples gave excuse. But when Jesus woke up, the Bible says he spoke to the wind. This night, I pray that God will empower somebody that you will go back and confront the things that has been confronting you. Amen. So what are the keys to supernatural advancement? <laughs> I call it supernatural advancement because it is not natural for you to make notable advancement. There is a devourer somewhere that wants to extinguish you before your time. Keys to supernatural advancement. What are the keys that I will engage? Or you simply put it this way. Daring faith that initiates change. You need daring faith that initiates change. In other words, the faith that gives you the boldness to initiate change. Let's, let's read the Bible now. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 33 to 35. You need faith. You cannot make progress until you are a man of faith. A man that believes God so well to dare the consequences. A man that believes God so well to dare the obstacles and the challenges. A man that believes God so well, like Esther who said, if I perish, I perish. But it's better that I die trying to fight than I remain in this point. You need faith. Somebody say faith. You need to be a man of faith. Jesus met that man at the pool of Bethesda. What was his question to him? He says, do you want to? That willingness is sponsored by a faith that is locked up in your spirit. A faith that is able to see the results ahead of the challenge. A faith that is able to see a sunny or a sunshine after that rain. A faith that is able to see light at the end of the tunnel. Even when visibly there are no lights. That's why the Bible says, why we look not at the things which are seen. Please get the screens for me. I need to read that passage. Hebrews 11. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. So faith makes you see the invisible. It makes you feel the intangible. So that you can do the impossible. Did you hear what I said? Ah, some of us are distracted. You didn't get what I said. That you are able to see what others don't see. So people see an obstacle. You are seeing a stepping stone. The other 10 spies that went to Canaan. What did they say? They were like giants before. We are like grasshoppers before them. Say we are not able to go up. But Joshua and Caleb. What was an obstacle to the other 10? They see something else. The Bible says a different spirit was in them. You want to advance in life, you must be a man of faith. Gone as those days where you, 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 you want people to believe God for you. You know that's what happens now. People come and put pressure on the man of God. Let me tell you the truth. I agree that there is a place for the anointing, but even the anointing works by faith. The Bible says that there was a man, while Paul was preaching in Lystra, there was a man that was lame in his feet from his mother's womb. The Bible says when, as he listened, Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. And that's when Paul says, stand up. In other words, the miracle can be activated when your faith is complete. So don't put pressure on other people and make them believe God for you. If you are always shying around men of God or shying around people to believe God for you, a day will come where a situation orchestrated from the realm of the spirit will come face to face with you and you'll be the only one in that class. You will be the only one in that exam. Eh? You know those days in secondary school we used to write Waek. So there were general subjects where everybody and then the hall was crowded. 
So people could do expo. Then there were some subjects that were provisional. You had to offer them. And because the people are few, they will space them. One person sits here after five tables, another person. So if you have been copying all this while, now that you are alone, and the next person to you is five tables away. A man of God says, either you believe God or die. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, believe God or die. I'm telling you. Life has been designed by God for everybody. You will always get to that place where all you have to do is believe God. That's when we'll know where if all the scriptures you have been reading, all the teachings you have been listening to, like this one you're listening to now, all the messages, some of us listen to all messages, all kinds. We even brag with it. We have them banked up in our phone. But the day comes when your faith is tested. And that faith will have been produced based on the word you have received. But the situation comes and doesn't find faith produced. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. It said the, the same gospel that we heard was preached to them. But it did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. That's why two people can be in the same church, listening to the same sermon. One takes the miracle, the other one goes back the same and thinks that the fault is from the pastor. No. I hope you know it was not everybody in Jesus' days that Jesus healed. For instance, the man that was at the temple, at the beautiful gate, the Bible says he had been there 40 years. That means that he was there. This was just 50 days after Jesus resurrected. 10 days after Jesus ascended. And Jesus was always going to the temple. So Jesus saw the man. But there was no faith in him. And so even Jesus. The king of kings. The word of God. Passed him by. That was why when Peter came to him. What did Peter say? He said look on us. Peter knew that the reason why this guy was not healed. All through Jesus' ministry. Was because he had no faith. You want to advance in life. You must be a man of faith. A man of boldness. A man of courage. Hebrews 11.33 Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Through what? Through connection? Through Godfathers? Through salary? Through human help? Through a man of God? Through a church? You know there are believers like that. Ah, me, I'm a winner. I'm a this one... <laughs> That does not mean you partake of the grace on that denomination. Let me tell you. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Eh? Who through faith subdued kingdoms, walked righteousness, obtained promise, stopped the mouths of lions. Go on to verse 35. Quench the violence of fire still through faith. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. That means they were weak. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. That's the language of faith. That you call those things that are not as though they were. In other words, you look at your future and you make it your past tense. That means that the faith life is a life that works from a standpoint of victory. So as believers, we don't pray to achieve victory. We pray from a place of victory. There are people who go to fast and pray and they, before they start that fast, they're already defeated. Brother, don't even waste your time. There is a reason why I always pray. Jesus said, Father, I thank you before Lazarus' grave. He said, I thank you because you always hear me. In other words, this is not an experiment. He said, but now in the open, hear me, so that this ones. Faith makes you live from a place of victory. The Bible says, in their weakness, but because of faith, they became strong. Became valiant in battle, like the mighty men of David. Like Samson, who killed 1,000 people, one man. If I get to heaven, I want to see him. I hope he made heaven. I'm sure he made heaven. One man, 1,000 soldiers killed all of them. If we had people like Samson, Boko Haram would be extinguished. But you know, you, you know what they'll try to do? They'll try to bribe him. Became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Go on to verse 35. Women received their dead 
Even women who Because naturally, a woman will always cry in the face of a situation. I don't know about you, but I'm a man of God. Sometimes when, when women are in crisis and they call you, you can't even hear what they are saying. Pastor! Your one minute, they can't even tell you what is wrong. Pastor, hey, hey, pastor, we are finished though. But the Bible says that there was, there was a set of women in scripture. It says that they received their dead back to life. Like the, Sh the Shunammite woman, she took her dead son, put him on Elisha's bed. In other words, I didn't bargain for death. Went to meet Elisha, held him on his leg. That your God must answer now. And when Elisha went to the house, entered the room, the woman stayed at the front of the room. The Bible says women receive their dead because of faith you want to make advancement you must be a man of faith you must be a woman of faith you must speak you must look at that sickness and affliction that is trying to tear your body down and declare the word of the lord that let the weak say i am strong the bible says for he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of his of our peace was laid upon him and by his stripes i am healed and you come out of that blanket nothing moves except you move it it will only move depending on the force that you act on it you, you, you put on it let me tell you something this life eh, is a life of force every day we are in the midst of warfare you many of us don't know that you even you you battle to live as you are sitting down looking at me there are cells in your body dying now but other cells are replicating and covering up for those cells so that the, the the cells in your body don't die at once that means for you to live you fight and who told you that to make progress in destiny you will not fight you are married no child and you sit down you just wait for god to stroll one day and visit you no ask isaac he knew the barrenness that came Abraham was hearing from God every day, but his wife remained barren. When it was Isaac's turn, the Bible says Isaac entreated the Lord. The word entreat is a prayer term. In other words, Isaac held God and said, no way, this cannot be a pattern. It happened to my father, it will not happen with me. And the Bible says twins came. You just sit down there and think that things will just work out like that. All things are working for my good. It's intentional after two years and you are in that situation you will change your song if you are with me say amen, amen. life is forceful life is about faith life is about faith i remember the story second kings chapter seven the four lepers the bible says elisha had given the prophecy by this time tomorrow there will be food and people think just because a man of god prophesied it will come to pass no way will. the bible says sin too there were four lepers at the gate of the city already they were naturally disadvantaged because they were lepers nobody will accept them not israel not their enemies so this was not a case of they had an advantage he said my father my father doesn't want to give me the job he doesn't want to help me he knows people are you kidding me you remain there These four lepers spoke to themselves. They say, why sit we here till we die? In other words, they knew that if we remain here, stagnation puts you at the risk of what? Extinction. There's nothing like I will remain, nothing like that. If you keep remaining at one spot, something will contend for that spot. Because everybody and everything is advancing by the day. If you remain in one spot, somebody will advance, push you out of that spot and enter there. They said, why city yet till we die? If we go into the city, we will die of the famine. If we sit down here, death is already waiting for us. They said, but let us go to the camp of the enemies. If they spare us, fine. If they kill us, at least we will still have died. Option A, option B, option C. We will die. But this option C, 50% chances that we, will, that we will be alive. And the Bible says when they got to the camp of the Syrians, they saw no one. Do you know that God is waiting for you to move? To move the situation in your family. 
For many generations, no man has arisen to partner with the Holy Ghost. And God is looking at you. If only you will arise and pray. A three days fasting and prayer can upturn the hand of Satan over an entire family. But it happens by faith. It happens by faith. Number two, keys to supernatural advancement. Prayers. Heartfelt, intentional, and intense prayers. Not just random prayers. Not just prayer to fulfill all righteousness. You go on a three days fasting and you are praying as though you lost your child. You are waiting for 12 o'clock to knock so that you can go and eat. No, that kind of prayer doesn't produce result. The Bible says the effectual and fervent effectual and fervent when was the last time you stayed on an issue until god spoke no we don't have believers like that these days you you try doing that they, they call you a man of god they call you a woman of god they call you names somebody say prayers you want to make advancement prayers luke chapter 18 from verse 1 jesus gave a parable to the disciples teaching them a fundamental truth in the kingdom that men ought always that means it is it is natural for men to keep praying the bible didn't say that men should pray it said that men ought always to pray so it is not praying once that settles the issue but prolonged intercession continually does a woman push once and the baby come out women answer me now you just push once ah, and the baby came out no way You know, thank God I'm a man. There are things I see women go through. I say, Kai, no, 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 no. I, you know, I, 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 I made a joke to somebody. I said, most of the problems of women are caused by men. It was a joke anyway. Menstruation, men. Menopause, men. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> That's just a joke. I didn't say, uh, no, don't go and hold a brother after service and say you are, no. Jesus said men ought always to pray. And he gave the parable of the widow. A widow. Approaching the judge every day. What was her cry? Avenge me of my enemies. And she kept coming every day. That means that there are prayers you keep pushing before God. You keep disturbing God. How will God say, put me in remembrance when he is the all-knowing God? Think about that. He is the all-knowing God, but he said, put me in remembrance. In other words, there is something about your push. There is something about your consistency. I see your dire need for me to step in and change that situation based on your consistent request. And the Bible says the judge had to give her, give her a, 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 a vengeance. Elijah was a man of prayer, a, a man of like passion like us, the Bible said. But he prayed. What differentiated Elijah from us is that he prayed. Elijah was not even in the new covenant that carried the Holy Spirit in them, that you can pray in tongues. No. Elijah was under the old covenant, but the Bible says he prayed earnestly. God did not tell Elijah that there will be no rain. No. Elijah prayed and forced that verdict out of God. That means there are prophecies that can come based on God speaking by himself. But there are prophecies that can be provoked from the heart of God. Daniel read the books of Jeremiah. That the children of Israel will be in captivity for 70 years. And 65 years they are into the captivity. Daniel went to pray. And guess what? They left, according to historical perspective, they left at the 68th year. They didn't get to 70. Why? Because a man decided to pray. Let me tell you, as far as change is concerned, prayer remains the number one kingdom agency. You cannot know true change until you activate prayer. Just in case you want to keep lazy. Now, that's the reason why Satan finds you to sleep every time you are praying. Because he knows that every time you begin to engage prayer, something is about to shake. Something is about to shift. Something is about to open. 
a generational curse is about to be broken. So he will find you to sleep continually. Keep sleeping. There are miracles in my life that didn't come by impartation. I had to pray myself into it. I like Bishop Oedepo. He said he's not surprised at where he is now. Because if he was not where he is now, he would have been surprised. It happens by prayer. That law enforcement agency of the spirit, you begin to press on that issue. As you pray, you wage warfare. You begin to bind principalities and powers. You begin to break the yokes of oppression and depression. You begin to lift the hand of Satan over that family. Especially if we must see revival in our days, we must have men that pray. We must have men that pray. The Bible says that the last day anointed will be the, 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 the former and the latter rain, isn't it? The former rain is the result gotten by the saints of old and the apostles. And their game was prayer. And if the latter is supposed to be greater than the former, that means we are going to pray times two. A man prayed until his heart shifted from the left to the right. They called him praying height. A man prayed to the queen of England said, I fear the prayers of this man more than the entire armies of Scotland. And we are in the latter ring and you think that things will just happen. You want to get married, four months to your wedding, no money. Everybody that promised to help you, they are giving you an excuse. The last man that would have helped you traveled abroad for a surgery. And it's not coming back till four months later after your wedding. And you sit down waiting for sympathizers. Sister, take that wedding. Hey, you know, in my own opinion, all these friends that we do, all these, uh, what they call that, friends, matching friends, in my own time, we we'll turn all of them to prayer warriors. Though. If you can't pray, you can't be a matching friend for me. Oh. Because if Satan cannot stop that wedding, he will try to stop that marriage through barrenness. If he cannot stop that marriage through barrenness, he will try to cause chaos. Next time you are going, they, they, they say, friends, make sure you select prayerful people. Prayer activates positive change for a superior dimension. Number three, keys for supernatural advancement. Keys to supernatural advancement. Divine favor, number three. Number one, faith to initiate changes. Number two, heartfelt prayers. Number three, divine favor. Ezra chapter 8 verse 22. Ezra said, the hand of the Lord is upon them for good that seek him. The hand of the Lord. Favor is described as the hand of God coming on a man. Favor is God's endorsement upon a man's life. Favor is God with a man. When God is with a man, you get the God kind of result through a man favor is when God is beside you the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace it's not normal for your enemies to all of a sudden begin to help you it takes a strange force it is called favor somebody who was wishing you dead yesterday comes and, and helps you it, it doesn't happen by luck luck is man's excuse for the ignorance of favor there's nothing like luck in this life. I don't think I've ever been lucky before. Everything that came to my life came because God brought it. And some of which were activated by my initiatives. Say you are lucky. No, that's what's happening these days. When the favor of God is on the man, they say, ah, this guy is lucky. Say, ah, she got married to a wealthy man. Ah, she's lucky, yo. Oh. Grace is unmerited, but favor is merited. Oh, there are things you can do to activate favor. You can walk in the favor of God 247. There are laws that govern favor. You can wear it like a perfume. When you come out, people will come out with money from their houses only to give it to you. As though there is charm controlling them. When you walk in the favor of God, you know that charm is, is, is primary. It's called favor. Daniel and Mary were two examples in the Bible. 
The Bible says, Oh, Daniel, greatly beloved and highly favored. Daniel was so favored, a time came where even angels began to come to help him. The first time you see favor of God in Daniel's life, there were six dimensions of God's favor. Maybe I'll teach it next year. On Daniel's life, six dimensions. The first one happened in chapter one. Where the keeper of the eunuchs, he had favor with him and he gave them vegetables. I hope you know that he did that at the risk of his ne neck. If those guys had appeared before Nebuchadnezzar, slimmer than the others, Nebuchadnezzar would have executed that keeper. How do you explain people from another country coming to gain favor in the palace? You want to advance, you need the favor of God. There are doors that will not open unless God favors you. You, you are qualified for the job, you write your CV, you submit, you pass the interview. Now they want to bring indigent sheep and exclude you. And it's the third time it wants to happen. You need favor. Tell your neighbor you need favor. You bid for the contract. And you surpass everybody, but they give the, the contract to another person. When you see those kind of patterns happening in your life, you are, you are void of divine favor. There is, so, there is a grace called favor that can come on a man that compels systems and, and people, place them under pressure. I'm telling you because I've seen it in my life. And I think this will be the less of what I will see. There was a man called Archbishop Benson Idaosa. Never invited, but he preached to over 150 countries. Why? Because every country he went to, the gate opened for him. That's not normal. He preached to whites, preached to blacks, preached to Indians, preached to all kinds of people. There's a man called Billy Graham of blessed memory, the greatest evangelist, evangelist of the 19th and 20th century. Billy Graham was the only evangelist to ever preach in North Korea. A nation that is under communism. A nation that is under all kinds of things. Billy Graham was the only one that held crusade till today in North Korea. The only minister, the only preacher in America that became a counselor to 13 United States presidents. Everyone that lives, tell the other one. Whether they belong to the same party or not, they say, make sure you are with Borabili till his death. That's not, that's not luck. It's favor. When you see a man walking in flawless and effortless result, God has shown him favor. You want to advance in this life? Because there are Hamans that will rise. That was why Esther's charm was the charm of favor. The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 verse 15, that God gave Esther favor in the sight of all who set eyes on her. What kind of, what kind of charm is that? Everybody that looks at you favors you. Even the king, like they were controlling him, carried the crown and put it. He didn't even ask her name. He just carried the crown, put it on her head. Before he, that's like getting a job before you, don't, you do the interview. It's not luck. Tell your neighbor favor. Favor. And tonight I pray that God will activate that grace. Many of you will rest when you begin to walk in favor. Many of you are skillful. You are intelligent, but no favor. Great business plan, but nobody is willing to sponsor you. Your friend that, is, that doesn't even know anything. People are giving her capital. You need favor. You need favor, I tell you. You need favor. Stop doing trial and error. Seek the favor of God. The Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and had favor with God and man. No wonder everywhere he went, God gave him favor. Man, he had favor with her. Even the gates of hell couldn't stop him. And Jesus said that he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do. And greater. That means we are yet to begin to walk into the dimensions of favor. I'm talking about uncommon favor. That they call you and say, sorry, or we'll get back to you, or you lost the job. And the next day, they change the verdict overnight. I was talking with somebody recently, a leader of, of, of a church. And after prayers with him, he came and was testifying to me. Six months in a job, and they promoted him to become the manager of that place. Six months. And there are people who have been there for years. Is it luck? You know one thing with favor... 
when a man comes at, one of my one of my daughters from the US I don't know she may be listening now she told me recently she went to visit a church she just went to worship in a church for the first time she met somebody in the church and the person said I must buy you a phone and the person kept calling her until he got it was one of these latest Samsung phones I told her my dear it's not local there's something on your head you are in Minnesota United States but you are connected to something far away that somebody just sees you didn't he, you, that that man that wanted to buy that phone I hope you know as he left his house with that money his relatives were broke they needed money maybe even left without dropping money for food when the favor of God is on you people will take what they desire and give it to you he said because I have loved you therefore I will give men for your sake Isaiah 43 say your sons and daughters will come from afar the abundance of the sea will be turned to you he said the sons of foreigners will build your walls and their kings will minister to you he said strangers shall feed your flock and you will glory and boast in their riches it's the favor of god who you want to break into a common wealth you need favor you need favor those dreams that you are seeing you saw yourself having so much wealth and influence helping people helping the poor promoting the gospel you will enter there only when the favor of god is on your life there are wealthy billionaires in nigeria today that are not using their money for the gospel at all they are rather using it to sponsor terrorism we need divine favor for that wealth to be transferred to the church and all oh, that men and women will arise and contend for it that god will put a problem in that man's body and meeting you brings the solution to that problem he will give you anything anything and by the grace of god i've seen such in my life you want to make advancements in your career in your business even in your spiritual life you need favor that there are dimensions that it would have taken you five years of sacrifice to get to god can just look at you and say you have found favor in my sight enter paul said i know a man whether in the body or in the spirit i don't know 14 years ago he was taken to heaven and he was shown things that were not lawful for man to utter. in other words god said these things i'm not supposed to show men who can't but come come let me show you he said can i hide from abraham my servant you can be anointed but walk with the favor of god and then finally as we pray the power of prophecy you want to advance you want to experience a supernatural shift you need the power of prophecy faith is okay prayer is okay even the favor of god is okay but there are doors that will not open until a prophetic voice the bible says in Hosea 12 13 by a prophet not by wishing not by luck by a prophet he led Israel. Israel were his covenant people. He was covenanted to their forefathers. He had promised Abraham, I will take them out of bondage. But he took the agency of the prophetic. The prophetic reveals two dimensions of God. The creative dimension of God and the revelatory dimension of God. We have seen the revelatory for a while. Where men will see what God is saying and say it to you. And that becomes your shift to another level. How do you explain a man tells you this is what I'm seeing and then a few days later, a few months later, you step into it. That is the power that is provoked when God's revelations come upon a man. But there is the creative dimension where God did not reveal, but a man knows what to do to God and then he speaks and God confirms his word. The Bible says in Mark 16 verse 20, and they went everywhere and preached and God was walking with them, confirming their word, not his word, their word. What were they preaching? Jesus and the gospel of the kingdom. But God called it their word because it came from their mouth. Do you know the Bible says, so shall my word be. Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11. It says, the rain cometh down from heaven. And does not return back but waters the earth so that it will give seed to the soul and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and it shall not return void on it, it has accomplished that which i have sent it he said just like that happens 
so also that a man God can invest grace upon him and when he speaks his word becomes the word of God and God is bound to fulfilling it it's called the power of prophecy there are certain shifts in destiny it takes prophecy to take you there many of you know you've watched online the current Olu of Ori I hope you know it's the 21st Olu and this 2021 it was time for him to sit on that throne but all kinds of conspiracy I watched the video where a prophet prophesied and this was abroad and the guy prophesied so accurate as though he, he knew everything happening in Nigeria there are places in destiny it takes, it takes prophecy to shift you Elisha told that woman he said by this time next year you will embrace a son historically I studied that, that chapter and I discovered that the Shunammite woman had been buried for 38 years 30, not 28 38 years that one even God must have given up because at least Sarah's one was 25 the man said by this time next year and he didn't say it after praying and fasting he was sitting there he said call that woman maybe after eating a good meal he said come you have treated us very well what will i do for you the woman said no i'm okay I'm... then then the servant said she doesn't have a child I said, okay by this time next year it's not about the man prophecy is god's agency for manifestation and experiences anything that shifts from the realm of the spirit to this realm comes through the agency of prophecy God told Moses, he said, and it shall come to be that when the children of Israel would leave Egypt, he said they would not leave empty-handed. That was Exodus 3.21. Exodus chapter 12 verse 36, or 35 and 36, the Bible says that they did as Moses told them and they borrowed from their neighbors, the Egyptians. And God gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Why? Because they did as a man said. Elisha spoke and said, by this time tomorrow, famine. He said, there will, a measure of, uh, of wheat will be sold at so-so price. And it happened. Friends, there is such a thing as the power of prophecy. That's why when we come here and we speak over your lives, one of my greatest judgments in every miracle service is when I'm making final prophecies and declarations. Many of you don't know the power that is available in those words to activate. It can shift you from the backside of the wilderness to the palace. Was it not here in one of our miracle service? I made a prophecy. I said I saw somebody having a 50,000 naira alert. It happened in that service. Prophecy. There are regions suffering. All kinds of attack, impoverishment. Nations crumbling in their economy. Why? Maybe because there is no prophet. Psalm 74 verse 9. He said we do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet. Neither is there anyone amongst us who will tell us how long. How long the enemy will continually reproach. That means the reproach of the enemy will continue until the prophet arises. And the prophet is one who has been endorsed by God to speak. There are countries in Africa that are impoverished in their economy. Why? Either because there is no prophetic voice to bring a shift to that nation. Or they have despised the prophets. But my Bible tells me in Isaiah 66, it says, Who has ever heard such a thing? Shall a nation be born at once? Shall, it, shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? It says, But as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. Why? Because it came through the mouth of a prophet. Are we ready to pray this night? I think I'm done with the teaching. This night. I am here with a pregnancy in my spirit because there are many of us here that must advance. You have been stuck in your career. You've been in that job for years, no promotion. Your business, seem, it seems like it is moving, but there are no profits. You put your profit right back into it. When will the change for my family comes? No advancement. God is ready to give you a shift this night. This night. Are we ready to pray? Please stand on your feet.
Are we set to pray tonight? Where is Timothy? Um, head of logistics. Where is he? We are going to pray, but let me do something before we pray. And just you, just you. Hey. Where's your Where's your brother? Huh? Where is he? change is about to come I want to pray for you you but I'll also pray for the family no you can stand up it's okay you can stand up I'll pray for your family but I want to pray for you but I want to tell you some things okay I have a prayer to make for you there is a grace coming on you but God wants to bring divine intervention and deliverance to your family okay Musa is your son name, right? Okay. This, I just want to ask some questions, okay? So you tell me if this is correct, okay? I just want to ask some questions. I don't know, but let me just ask. If, if what I'm saying is wrong, no problem. But if not, fine. And I think I've not seen anybody from your family before, have I? None. Okay. Let me act out something. Come, sir. Come. Um. Um. Okay, I need two ladies. Just two. Don't worry, just follow me. <laughs> I need to just to any lady just volunteer i will not pray for you no it's not no anointing just to one two okay three of you stand this way yes stand there how many ladies are there two how many guys are there one right there is a flower that they usually use to um when you want to propose to a, a lady or they call it a love flower what's the name of that flower huh rose flower rose so if you attach rose with the name of the mother of jesus it's called what who is that huh your elder sister okay wait Shh. hold on that's one lady, ba? All right. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to visit your family and bring deliverance. There is an attack of the enemy, but God wants to bring deliverance. Um, come, where is Ada? What's your name? Your English name? Eh? Use your mic now. Let them hear you. What's your English name? Eh? Christine. But not... It doesn't... Not the one... I'm not talking about the one that ends with N. I'm talking about you removing the N. And then leaving it like that. What will you have? Christy. Christy. Who's, who's Christy? Our firstborn. Your firstborn. Okay. What's the name of the prophet that anointed David? Huh? Huh? Samuel. Is there any Samuel you know? My elder brother. Your elder brother. Okay. I said I'm just asking a question. Okay? I just wanted to know if I was correct. There's deliverance coming for your family. We come against accident and we come against any kind of kidnap in the name of Jesus. Stand, two of you, stand. Stand. Now, the proof of what I'm telling you now, there's an attack of like whether accident or kidnapping because, you know, so many cars 
you just see so many cars and then you see people coming out so it's like either an accident or a kidnap the proof is that right now there are two people in your family intending to travel one of them is intending to travel outside of the state are you aware of anybody intending to travel? You, you don't know this one but there are two people when you go home you'll find out but God is bringing deliverance I said God is bringing deliverance stretch your hands towards them and whatever prayer you pray for them is going to your family in the name that is above every other name every tra tragedy and every attack that the enemy is planning to cause pain we command that attack to be shattered now make sure you raise your voice and pray for them we shatter the attacks of darkness we frustrate the activities of the enemy and in the name of Jesus Christ we declare preservation 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 You know this song. You are the God who opens every door. You know that song. You are the God who makes the lame to walk. You are the God that makes the blind eyes see. You are the God that gives me victory. You are the God that opens every door. You are the God that makes the lame to walk. Hey, you are the God that makes the blind eyes see. You are the God that gives me victory. So we say Alpha and Omega. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name, God. We worship your name. Alpha and Omega. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name, God. We worship your name. Two of you step forward. Father, hold your hands together divine preservation we come against every activity of kidnap we come against every agenda of accident we rebuke the devourer from this family and I use the two of you as a point of contact all your siblings and your parents are preserved all your siblings and your parents are preserved what do you know this name Kachala 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 your father's elder brother. Then who is Barka? Barka. His son. His son. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, preservation. Over his life and his son. They may not be here, but because they are connected to you. Preservation. In the name of Jesus. Go and tell them it is well. And for you, sir, God is giving you an unusual spirit of faith. Unusual boldness is coming on your life. You will do great things for the kingdom. Receive that grace. Help him in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys sit down. Are you ready to pray? Two prayer points and we'll be done. Can we sing that song one more time? Alpha and Omega. We worship your name. You don't know the song. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship Alpha and Omega. None like you, Lord. Say, we worship your name. We worship you. Two more times the class say, we worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. Prayer point number one, every conspiracy of hell 
that has brought any form of stagnation over my life let it be shattered this night by the power of the Holy Ghost lift your voice and pray are you praying lift your voice and pray every conspiracy to cause stagnation over my destiny over my life are you praying are you praying? Outside, are you praying? Come on, pray. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, we shatter the force of We shatter every conspiracy of stagnation. Let it be broken now. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Hey! Hey! Let the yoke of stagnation be broken. Every conspiracy of hell that has made me stagnant in my career, in my business, in my family, in my spiritual life. Every manipulation of hell. Be shut up now. Be shut up now. You are great, yes, you are. Holy God. Keep praying, keep praying. You walk upon the sea. You raise the dead. You reign in majesty. Mighty God, hey. Everything written about you is great. Come on, keep praying, keep praying. Stagnation is over. Stagnation is over. Delay comes to an end. Let the yoke of hell be broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two because of time. Obadiah 1 17. Please put it for us on the screen. That's the second prayer point and the last one. Before we begin to pray and minister, I'm going to pray for the sick. There are people God will heal tonight. I tell you. I tell you. There are people God will heal tonight. There is a lady here. You came here with fibroid. 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 Wherever you are, rush forward very quick. Fibroid. Obadiah 1 17. Let's read it on the screen at the count of three. One, two, three. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall do what? Possess whatever has been denied you by reason of stagnation, by reason of delay. It is time to possess your possession. Can you raise your voice and begin to pray? Whatever has escaped you, whatever has been denied you, tonight the house of Jacob shall possess, possess your resources, possess your job, possess your peace. Open your mouth and cry. Open your mouth and cry. Open your mouth and cry. You are great. You are great. Everything written about you. Come on, lift your voice. Say you are great. Le 
You are great. You are great. You are great. Possess your possession. Possess your possession. You are great. Everything written about you is great. You are great. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. In Jesus' name, you are great. Everything written about you. Who is the woman with fibroid? Fibroid. I want to pray for the sick shortly. But there is somebody here. You are fibroid. Or maybe you don't even know that you have. But there is somebody here with fibroid. God wants to heal you now. Not tomorrow. Now. Blessed be your name tonight. Everything written about you. It's great. Where is Diana? The usher. There's a major breakthrough coming for you. Huh? There's a major breakthrough coming for you. There's a major breakthrough. A breakthrough that will open you up for finances. Maybe a job. And there are things I will tell you, but not here. But I want to ask you a question. Huh? Let me ask questions this night. What day were you, were you born? Huh? Fifth what? Fifth September. Where is your birth certificate? Huh? I'm not here. What's wrong with our mic? Please help us quickly. Your birth certificate is at home. Can somebody reach it now? Yes, I can call you. You can call somebody to reach yes, for us. Yes. Where last did you see that certificate? Um, like maybe two weeks ago, I was trying to dust my documents. Okay. On that certificate, is it truly 5th of September? Yes. You are sure? Yes. You are sure? You were not born on the fifth. Huh? You were not born on the fifth. You know, sometimes when you go to hospital, they can somebody can give birth around midnight or the following day, and then they'll now record it for the previous day. Amen. Because you are a, a woman of prophecy. There is grace on your life, okay? There is grace, and there are things that want to shift. Because what God is showing is that the process that led to your birth, in other words, the labor, your birth, your pregnancy, that period was difficult for your mom. Yes, very, very difficult. Yes, sir. In fact, the labor was prolonged. She didn't give birth when she was supposed to. If she had given birth, I don't know whether you know this one, but if she had given birth when she was supposed to give birth, you would not have been born in September. You would have been born in August. The truth is, uh, she came... Okay, I didn't grow up with her. Okay. I didn't know her. 
So it was later, around 2012, I think, that was the day she, I saw her for the first time. Okay. So she later, it was actually my dad that said 5th September, but when she came back, she said, my birthday is not 5th September, it's 9th August. That is what? 9th August. 9th August. It takes, listen, this is, this is what the Holy Spirit can do. Even facts can lie. You know why we are reaching down to when you were born? Because there is a change coming on your life. Amen. And God wants to recorrect certain things. Some of those things I'll talk to you later. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, let that breakthrough happen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And you are going to get a miracle job soon. Can we pray now? Is that okay? Is it okay for us to pray? Is there anybody with the name Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 Please run very quickly if you know you are the one. Jennifer. Run very quickly, please. Jennifer. You, Jennifer? You are Jennifer? You are Jennifer too? We'll fish, we'll fish out the person. I'll pray for both of you, but we'll fish out the person. Are we ready to pray? God is going to heal people tonight. I want your faith to be open tonight. I'm only doing all this so that your faith can be open tonight. God is going to do wonders. That woman with fibroid, I'm waiting for you. Don't come after the service. There's a woman here, you have fibroid. And God wants to heal you. Jennifer, the two of you step forward. Everything written about you. You are great. You are great. You are great. You are great. Yes, Lord, you are great. You are great. Oh, you are great. You are great. Everything. pray for the two of you but this is i just want to ask questions so i know the person god wants me to pray for because i want to reverse an arrow all right i want to reverse an arrow but i want to know which family but i'll pray with the two of you now i'm seeing the letter u letter u and that is supposed to be the letter that begins a name so based on what i'm seeing there's one of you with somebody connected to you with a name that starts with you. You. That's number one. Number two, I heard Daniel. Again, Daniel. Like somebody else connected to one of you. Are you, look at me, two of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? So there is somebody with a name that starts with the letter U. Are you hearing me? connected to one of you you are not sisters right good and then there is a name i'm seeing daniel still another person connected who is the person think very quick so that we can pray now there's no time huh talk now let's hear there's what i say daniel uh, who is daniel who is daniel he's an uncle he's an uncle yes I thought you celebrate God. There's a name that starts with you. What tribe are you? Kilba. You are Kilba from Adamawa State. You are what? You are Marigi from this state. From okay, from Adamawa State. There is a name that starts with you. Okay? But I'm going to pray for you because you are the one now. God says, huh? 
Huh? You have an uncle Daniel. You also have an uncle Daniel in this town. Okay. Okay. Do you want us to pray for that uncle? How close are you to him? I I used to go to his house. He he's working out my staff request. In fact, so I, we are close. He's my he grew up with my dad. You are very close. Yes. Can we pray for him? Yes, sir. Hmm? Because as as you're standing here now, I'm seeing in a vision. I'm seeing somebody that is tall, taller than you and has a good body built up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And God is saying I should pray for that person because I'm seeing an issue around the chest. I'm seeing an issue around the chest and we need to pray so that it doesn't become something else. Do you know of his health condition? No, you sir. don't know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I'm seeing an issue around the chest. Maybe we'll just stop there because there are things they don't know. Eh? but in the name of Jesus I come against every condition with his heart and every condition with his health we speak life to him Amen. in the name of Jesus my dear hold my hand we reverse every arrow of the enemy targeted against your family in the name of Jesus and hear what the Lord is saying he's breaking delay from your family He's breaking delay. That devil lets you go now in the name of Jesus. It's over. In Jesus' name. Can we pray for the sick now? I want you to do this very quick. Put your hand where you have the problem. Put your hand where you have the problem in your body. And if it's a delicate part you cannot touch, please put your hand on your chest. We are going to pray right now. God is going to do miracles and heal people right now. God is going to do miracles and heal people right now. Right now. Right now. There's somebody you usually have um, an issue with your eyes. Like tears comes out consistently. That's what I'm seeing. God is healing you now as I'm saying it. I see like tears coming out often God is healing you right now can we pray for the sick now are we ready Jesus is the healer and he heals to demonstrate his power and that he's alive forevermore father in the name of Jesus I pray for your children and everyone under the sound of my voice whether online or on this ground and I rebuke every affliction I rebuke every sickness I rebuke every disease. I rebuke every demon of disease. You could shout amen better if you agree with me. I rebuke every affliction. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I rebuke migraine. Go in the name of Jesus. Migraine. Go in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every ear condition. Ear. Ear. Ear condition. Whether partially deaf, totally deaf, pains around your ear, any condition with the ear, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I command healing in your bloodstreams. I command healing in your bloodstreams. I command healing in your bones. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I declare that you are healed. I come against every symptom of allergy. Did you hear what I said? Every symptom of allergy. You are allergic to this. You are allergic to that. I command it to stop from now in the name of Jesus. Every form of itching or skin infection. I command be healed now. Be healed now. That itching stops right now in the name of Jesus. I command every condition with the chest right now. Receive the healing power of God. Receive the healing power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't come out, but God showed me this in the afternoon. Don't come out, or maybe if you can. Just not for embarrassment's sake. If you want to, no, no problem. But I saw somebody that came for this meeting. You have a discharge that comes out of your body. 
a discharge irregular discharge a flow but God is healing you right now for social reasons you may not come out maybe you just smuggle your testimony through one of the leaders or something but I saw a discharge I saw it this morning while I was praying God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus I command arthritis to go right now there is a person here, you are young, you are not old, but you have a problem with your knees. You have a problem with your knees. And if you stand for a little bit longer, you, your legs will begin to shake. God is healing you right now. Amen. God is healing you right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every condition that was not mentioned in the name of Jesus, the Lord heals you now. Amen. The Lord heals you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Can we wave our hands and celebrate the Lord? Give him praise. Give him praise. Everything within about you is great. You are great. You are great. You are great. somebody God is healing of ulcer ulcer condition now I want you to check yourself quickly check yourself if the illness is gone or the pain is gone quickly if it is gone or it is gradually going please rush forward and let's take your testimony very quick and celebrate God for what he's doing but right now there is somebody God is healing of ulcer I don't know you may be outside are there people outside I don't know you may be outside or inside but maybe outside but there's somebody God is healing of ulcer right now. God is healing of ulcer. I see somebody who is fair in complexion. And I see a problem with one of your, your ties. In other words, your lap. And I see healing from your, 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 um, what's your hip bone all through your lap. You are fair. That's what I'm seeing. And I see God healing you. You are light skin. I see God just healing you, taking away that pain. In the name of Jesus, if God has healed you, please rush forward very quickly. Let's take your testimony as we just worship God briefly. You are great. 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 time declare say you are great 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 sing is great you are great ready to be great everything we think about you one more time Raise your voice, you are great. Please check yourself. One of the things that I see God doing is there are healings. Listen, there are healings for long. Diseases, sicknesses for long in your body that God is healing. Amen. Now, who has the name or who is connected to the name Ezekiel? I just heard that. Ezekiel. 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 Huh? Connected to my dad. Ezekiel is who? My dad. Your dad. Yes, sir. And that's the person I'll pray for. Stand. But huh? there's no other person with Ezekiel here. You are Ezekiel. Your younger brother. No, it's she. 
As soon as she came forward, the Holy Spirit said, "Is she?" You came up because God healed you, ba? But God is healing your father as I'm talking. Amen. There's a condition in his body. Now look at me, because I know I've met him once. Okay. Now you people may have grown up to know your father as someone who is always acting fine and okay and cheerful, but there's been a long condition in his body, a long condition in his body. And um, what I'm seeing is pains that he struggles with on a part of his body. And there are these headaches he gets yes, sir. consistently yes, sir. Yes, often. Sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes it can become so heavy, his eyes will literally be red. Yes, sir. It has been for a long time because I see him taking drugs. Yes, sir. As I'm talking to you right now, there is an angel touching him where he is. Amen. And God is taking away that ailment forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There was somebody God showed me this afternoon. I don't know why God is going like this today. I saw a vision of somebody. We'll take the testimonies. I saw a vision of somebody. And then in this vision, I saw a military attire. I saw a military dress like a camouflage, a khaki. And then... I saw a badge. Listen as I'm describing. This person is not here. He's connected to somebody here. I saw a military dress, a camouflage, like I said, a khaki. And then I saw a badge. And I saw four letters, O-P-S-H. And while I pondered on that, the Holy Spirit told me that it means Operation Safe Heaven. That means that this person is in the military and somehow is either currently serving in Joss, because I think that's the operation for Joss. Is it Joss or where? But is serving somewhere around Joss. Is in the military, is serving somewhere around that axis and is connected to somebody here. This person I'm seeing is a young man, dark in complexion. And we need to pray for that person. He's connected to somebody who came here. We need to pray for that person because God wants to reverse the arrow of death on that person. Did you hear what I said? Can I repeat it again? I said I saw a military dress. I saw someone on military. And I saw OPSSH. That is Operation Safe Haven. I had to look that up to check it. And the Lord told me this person is serving around the North Central. Somewhere around Joss. And is connected to somebody is dark in complexion is not tall stoutly built dark his eyes are inside has this place are a little bit swollen somehow and god wants to reverse the arrow of death is who is who your what your cousin brother from where joss he's in joss right now what's his name yusuf come on you are just watching Listen, you didn't come to this miracle service for only you. You came for your families. Some of you think you guess what? Did you meet me before now? Did you tell me you had a cousin? Did you text it to me? Or did I come here and then we arranged for it? People are just looking at me as if we fabricated it. <laughs> See, that's the problem with the prophetic. When it's not celebrated, it just shuts down. Yeah. Who is to you? Wait, He's mine. wait. It's not you, but we'll pray for that person. Huh? Who is the person? He's my husband. He's your husband to be. Yes. But this description fits him. But I'll pray for him too. Okay? Come, let me pray for him. Father, in the name Ayama Kalabakosia. Where is he? He's at Joss. He's at Joss now, currently. Yes. Come. In all your ways, you are beautiful. In all your ways, we 
are going to pray for him because I'm seeing somebody who is about to leave. He's about to leave a place like a transfer. And I'm seeing him holding gun, but I'm seeing other people around him. And they're like under his command. They're about to move them to another place. And this place they're about to move them to is like a death trap. And we need to pray for divine preservation. I just remembered we are in the ember moons. I just remembered that we are in the ember moons. And every demon that eats flesh and suck blood will not come near your dwelling. Is it true? Do you know about that? He's about to be yes, moved, posted have, somebody, somewhere. They have posted him. Already. They have posted him. Yes, but he has not left. But he has not left. Yes. Because I'm seeing somebody holding a gun. I'm seeing other soldiers, but they are under his command. We cancel it. We cancel it. <laughs> we cancel it. Mandro Satranda la Cabra de Legui. Bosuria Bacana. Let's to Caparieke la Bacana. We say no. We say no. Bring it down. Because, ah, uh, no, we cancel it. No, no. Listen. It is prophecy when they are able to see the problem and avert it. Not the one that you see and then it happens. No. Suspect that person. The person sees bad thing and he tells you it happens. Suspect that person. Is either that person is the witch. Huh? We cancel it. Because where they are about to post him to is like a dead trap. This person, this your person. Is an other rank, not an officer. Is an uh, other presently rank. Presently, he's in the psychiatric. He's in the psychiatric yes, presently. Yes, sir. Uh, don't worry, I'll pray for him. It's like a death trap where he's being post he's supposed to be posted to. And I'm seeing the enemy about to repeat a pattern. Because listen, please bring that thing down. I need I need calmness now. I am in a vision right now. And I see them, I see people holding guns and shooting. I see bullets flying. Alright? And then I see a bullet enter the heart of somebody. Now, this is what the Lord told me. It's a pattern that is about to be repeated because somebody close to him in the military died like that. Okay? Somebody close to him, I saw a bullet to the chest. And I saw that pattern about to replay again for him. But in the name of Jesus, we speak preservation by the blood. Preservation by the blood. Preservation by the blood. We cancel that death sentence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. What's his name? Yusuf. 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 I'm hearing a name. Yunusa. 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 Is that a name? Yunusa. It's connected to somebody here. Yunusa. What's wrong? Huh? I have two cousins. The other one is Yunusa. The other one is Yusuf. And both of them are army. Huh? And both of them are what? Both of them are army, other rank. Both of them are in the army, other rank. Yes, sir. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> Bro, Arhel, they are looking at me like we arranged it. Like we did. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on social media. I don't know. I don't get information from anywhere. If you saw me on Facebook, it's not me. You saw a, a lying spirit. <laughs> Yusuf and Yunusa. Father, let the reproach over Yusuf come to an end. Yes. You said he's in psychiatry. Yes, sir. But this is not the first time he's going for this issue. Yes, sir. Because I see him keep going back and forth. I see him collecting something like a report and he will go back. And fought. Yes, sir. And it has affected his career in the military. Yes, sir. Which psychiatric hospital? I don't know. You it's don't know? Just currently. Yes. Can God do a miracle that will blow our mind? The Bible says he sent forth the word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Lord, I lay my hands on her with the agreement of your people. Amen. And we send a word of healing to you soon. That spirit of insanity will cast you out right Amen. now. See, 
is a case of headaches. Headaches, that's what I'm seeing. Yes, because I'm seeing somebody whose eyes are red. Headaches, that's what I'm seeing. Yes. Headaches, headaches. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak healing right now. Amen. Father, heal you soon now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I declare that Yusuf and Yunusa are preserved. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go and tell him he's over. God will shield him. Huh? Affliction will not rise the second time. Let's hear the testimony. Celebrate God. Let's hear the testimony. Yes. Uh, Apostle, this you is... Can, you can sit down for two minutes. Just two minutes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, this is Musa. Huh? Come again, sir. This is Shedrach Ishaku. Okay. He came in here with an itching all over his body. And he's allergic to fish. But right now, he's now free. There's no, no more itching. itching. No more itching. And we need to test. You need to go back and eat fish. <laughs> and this sickness has lasted for the past four years. For four years. A skin condition. That's how you clap. That's how you celebrate God. <laughs> All over your body. My neck. Huh? My neck. Your neck. How, how, what causes the itching? It just starts itching on its own or something yes. comes on it and then it starts to itch? Whenever I eat fish. Whenever you eat fish. Yes, I wish we had roasted fish. You would have. But you don't feel the itching anymore. No, I don't feel In the name of Jesus, your healing is permanent. In Jesus' name. Never to return. In Jesus' name. My brother, look at me. Go back home and eat fish. Throughout this week. And I tell you, it's not coming back. In Jesus' name. Celebrate God. Yes. Amen. Apostle, this is Sister Afiniki Abbas. Sister Afiniki. Okay, go ahead. She came in with side pain both of her waist side pain yes sir all right both of her waist but right now she's healed of that condition all right since five days ago huh since five days ago five days ago yes sir but now she's pain healed. around your waist yeah. okay both side yes, sir. both side you feel pains yes, can you bend bend like this let's see stand bend again any pain no pain. Yes, sir. Come on, celebrate God. Never to return in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, next. Quickly, so that we can pray. Sir, this is Sister Elisha, Elisha Cynthia Adamu. Okay. Had an accident on Friday, 27th, August. Ah, come, 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 come. I'm seeing something. Come, come up. Come up. Let them see. Because the way people are looking at me is like we fake this thing. When you see a native doctor, you he has real power. When you see a man of God, he has fake power. Ba? What's this? A bracelet. What's this for? You had a clavicle fracture. Yes, sir. So you put this to okay, support, to support your hand. Yes, sir. How long has this been? Eight days ago. Eh? Eight days ago. Eight days ago. You had an accident. While coming back. While coming back. Yes, sir. And then you had a fracture. Yes, sir. But how about now? Less of the pain. Less of the pain. Yes, sir. Alpha and Omega, we worship we your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. We worship One more time. Alpha and Omega, we worship your name. We worship your name. We worship your name. ago and you are going to be completely healed father in the name of jesus hold on this um, what couldn't you do with this hand after the accident let me see what could you not do just tell me i couldn't raise this hand properly you couldn't raise it properly yes, that means sir. you couldn't even lift it I couldn't lift but i'm going to pray for you now you are going to lift this hand amen. without pain amen hold this mic in case you don't believe in miracles, you came here by mistake. Sit down, watch one. Father.
healed by the power of God. All pains go. Bone come to its bone now. Bone come to its bone. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You couldn't lift the hand. Lift the hand. Let the whole world know that Jesus is still alive. Is this how you celebrate a miracle? fracture you saw you saw the bracelet go to lift her hand and lifted it right now by the power of God just allow her she's under the anointing God is perfecting the healing this is life not stage managed amen somebody say can God do this may God begin to do signs and wonders through you in the name of Jesus Christ just allow her when she stands up then you can take her it is perfected in the name of Jesus. You can see she's even resting on that hand, on that shoulder. That means there is no pain. When next you see Jesus, tell him I'll serve him for the rest of my life. I say you, when next you see Jesus, give him a message from me. I will serve him all my days. Hey! Celebrate the Lord Jesus. Please take your seat. Yes. Apostle. This is Sister Alheri Ezekiel Pauna. She came into church with an ulcer and a very terrible chest pain. An ulcer and a terrible chest pain. And she could hardly pray properly, but as it is now, everything is gone. Gone. You couldn't breathe properly for you the had chest pain and years. ulcer. Do you have a breathing condition as well? No, sir. Have you ever had a breathing condition before? Sometimes, sir. Sometimes. I have difficulty in managing. Difficulty in your breathing. Yes, sir. But how about now? It's fine, sir. I Brit came with also back pain. And I also back pain. Yes, the people sitting beside me, I was trying to. Stretch. Where are the people who sat near her? Okay, at the back? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's true. She was trying to. Yes. How are you feeling now? I feel fine, sir. Come on. Who will, who will see this miracle? Come. Sir, this condition lasted for the past 10 years. 10 years! That devil is in trouble. Remember, I told you, I said God is healing long cases. Cases that have been for long. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every affliction that is resident in your life or in your family that has been for long. It leaves your life and your family forever in the name of Jesus. Amen! It leaves your life now forever in Jesus' name. Amen! Father, never to return. Amen. We perfect this healing. Amen. We perfect this healing. Amen. No more pain, no more ulcer. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, this is what we will do. Okay? Can we do? Can we walk by faith? I prayed for your dad right now. Can you call him now? You remember the things I said. Call him, ask him, and then ask him how he's feeling now. Then give us the report so that it can be double miracles in one. Celebrate God for that. Yes. Pastor, sir, this is Brother Chris. He traveled some months back and he had an illness and he was injected. Okay. Several injections. Okay. So the injection affected his leg. His leg? Yes. One, one of his legs? The boat of the them. boat. Okay. Yes. So an hour ago in the service now, he yes. called his mom and said to his mom that he can't move his legs because the injections have affected his leg. But while the service was going on and the prayer was going on, he just found out that he could even twist the leg. They are all fine. Oh yeah, do what you couldn't do. Run to that point and come back. Let's see. Glory! Wait. You said you were injected and it caused all those things. Yeah. But right now the pain is gone. It's gone. 
Olowo pokoro is turning things around. That's the song. Olowo pokoro is turning things around. Hold on, hold on. Now this is what you do. You called your mother during the service. Told her you couldn't move your legs. Go and tell her that you feel like playing football now. Go and call her and tell her now. Can you give Jesus a big shout and heart of praise? Oh Lord, what a God. Standing things around. Come and say. Oh Lord, what a God. Standing things around. Oh Lord, what a God. Oh Lord, Standing things around. For my good. There's a lady, that, that person I'm seeing at the wall, close to the door, with head. Who is that? Come. The Lord just said I should pray for you. Can, we, can, you, can you be on, our, on your feet, please? I'm going to prophesy on our lives and then we'll close. Uh, is that all? I hope that's all. That's all. Right now, listen. God is still healing people now as I'm talking. In fact, there's somebody you just felt a sensation right now on your body. You just felt a sensation right now on your body. Right now, you just felt a sensation. God has healed you. Wherever you are, please come very quickly. Let's confirm it. Madam, the one wearing yellow. Yes, can you come? Can I pray for you? I don't know. I just see, I see heaviness on you. Like you're carrying a load or something. You feel some heaviness on you and God wants it to be removed. Come, madam, come. Is it true? You feel like there's, you usually feel like there's load on you. Heavy. I'm in pain. Like in pain. Emotional pain. Okay, no, don't worry. God will heal you for that one. But come, come. Come. God will heal you emotionally, but I see God also doing a physical healing. Why am I seeing a pain around your chest that comes? It pricks you. It will come very sharp and prick you. Sometimes like somebody is stabbing you or something. And then I'm also seeing God doing a healing around your back. From your head to your spine. Sometimes your shoulders feel like they are heavy. Like they are clogged. Yes, Sometimes you feel like the joints around that place is not free. Yes, God is about to heal you. How long have you had this? was diagnosed of um, intestine ulcer last month. Okay. And uh, I had an infection. Okay. That affected me, which I've been treating. Okay. So it do cause me pain on my chest. The pain on your chest. Yes. Okay. Do you believe God can heal? Yes, I believe. That's why I'm here. You reign, you reign, Shen Zion's Kadosh. Kadosh, you You're are mighty, mighty on your throne. Listen, listen. Those drugs, huh? You will not take them again. Those drugs I saw, I'm seeing right now that you left at home. You won't take them again. Hold my hand. Just hold my hand. Moving in our means, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing in this place. I worship you. I worship you. So we call you. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. One more time, we make a we make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. Yeah. Father, heal her physically, 
emotionally let all the pains go in the name of Jesus by my count I want you to breathe in three times by my count number one breathe in out two out three it's over it's over it's over how do you feel huh you feel like something cold just running through you right it's over it's over you are healed completely you are healed completely come my dear let me pray for you okay ah. god located you today hold my hand father i release grace in the name of jesus I release grace and I rebuke the spirit of fear. I rebuke the spirit of fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You may not believe what I'm about to tell you. Maybe because you don't look like it. But you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of the Lord. I see a very strong anointing in your life. Holy Spirit activated right now. And you were born with the fire of his presence. There's something happening to her now. There's something happening. Grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes. Anything I'm hearing? Okay. Huh? Okay. Thank you, Father. I activate it. I'm literally carrying her. I activate it. That fire never be the same. Never be the same. Because you will be a vessel in the hand of the Lord. And from today, those weaknesses are overcome. That addiction is broken. And the Lord set you free right now. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I'm going to make the altar call right now. But there is somebody God is showing me. Okay, okay. There's somebody God is showing me. I'm going to make the altar call right now because I just sense the anointing. You will have to. You'll have to surrender to Jesus now. This person I'm seeing. Because God wants to break an addiction in your life. So when I make the altar call, I want you to come. Everybody here in the auditorium and at the overflow, before I pray and prophesy over our lives, I want to give this opportunity for those who need to know the Lord Jesus. Please, no movement everywhere. Let's respect this prayer. Listen to me. You can come to church, witness all that God does, but it doesn't mean you are part of his family only jesus saves and you will know that you are truly his when you have his spirit in you if you are here and you need to surrender to the lord jesus you need to say yes to him please quit running away from the lord quit running away from the lord every time an altar call is made you will not come out because you feel your ways are right but you jesus doesn't know you today god is giving you an opportunity he wants to make your life new again he wants to give your life a meaning i will count to 15 if you are here in this hall or at the overflow and you need to give your heart to the lord you need to say yes to jesus you want to stop playing games and be serious with him i will count one to 15 i want you to run from your seat i didn't say walk run from your seat or you are here perhaps and you need to rededicate your life you used to be with god but a lot of things have happened and you are not with him again while we are all standing, I want you to join these two categories. Run to the front as I count 1 to 15. If you are in the overflow or in the auditorium, as you hear this call to salvation, I don't want you to harden your heart. Put away pride. Put away any shyness. Say yes to Jesus. Only Jesus can deliver. Only Jesus can save. As I count 1 to 5 or 15 rather, 
put your hands together for them as they are coming. Let's celebrate God for them. One. Two. Three. God wants to break that addiction. But you must give him your life. Four. Five. Overflow. Say yes to Jesus. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Don't be ashamed. Apostle, you don't know what I've done. Come, Jesus is calling you. Thirteen. Fourteen. Please hasten yourself. Run quickly. Jesus is calling you. Run quickly. Forget about who is around you. And come quickly to the call of salvation. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Please, let's be all standing. I'm going to lead this once. If you are still coming, please come. If you are still coming to join them, please come. Because after this prayer, if you come after the prayer, you are not saved. If you are still coming to join them, please come. God wants to make your life whole again. He wants to give you another meaning. God bless you, my brother. Can we stretch our hands towards this one? The greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. There is no faking about it. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And Lord, we thank you for this harvest of soul. Those of you in front, just repeat after me, but mean it from your heart. Whether you are rededicating your life or you are coming to Jesus afresh, say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me. I accept eternal life. I accept salvation. Thank you for saving me. I declare that from today I am yours and yours alone my past is over and a new life begins with you now and forever in Jesus name father in the name of Jesus I present these ones to you you died for them you died for them help her seal them with the seal of your Holy Spirit let every yoke of addiction be broken from their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that they receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I decree and declare that their sins are forgiven. I decree and declare that their past is over. In the name of Jesus, forward ever, backward never. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we celebrate God for them? hallelujah listen when you see all these things happening these these are not jokes these are not drama this is real salvation power there is a young man don't come out but you can see one of the pastors god is setting you free from pornography in fact there are two i just saw you now i mean i can see you now now god is setting you free from pornography that devil that is trying to hold your destiny down is broken from your life in the name of Jesus you can see any of the pastors after now don't come out for social reasons but God is breaking that addiction God bless you I salute you my brothers and sisters you have made a very noble decision and your life has changed it's a new walk with God please just follow the brother waving behind you all right look behind you there's a brother waving his hand he will talk to you pray with you get your contacts listen this ones and all the souls we had at um, um what they call youth aflame this week i want to have a special meeting with them i want to pray with them talk to them all right and then just be around them god bless you please celebrate god for them please follow the brother behind when she stands up when she stands up, just lead her to join them. Can we rise? Hallelujah. 
I want you to take these prayers very serious because many of you, this is your part of this service. You didn't wait up to this time for nothing. I know we've outstretched the time, but something is about to shift in your life. God told me it is time for advancement. And therefore, everything that has brought stagnation around your life is crumbling down now. Please lift your, life, your hands. I want to speak over your lives now. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb Seated on the throne Mountains bow down And the oceans roll To the Lord of hosts Who is like him? Lion and the Lamb Seated on the throne Mountains bow down And the ocean roll To the Lord of hosts Please bring it down. Um, did we ask... I just remembered something now. Did we ask, how many of you saw online that you were supposed to come with prayer requests? Was it publicized? Huh? It was publicized online. Oh, many people didn't hear. Okay, this is what you will do. This is what you will do because of time. I wish I had time. Next miracle service when you are coming. Huh? I want you to write your prayer request. And when I say write prayer request, listen. Don't go and fool the whole full scab, no. Write something specific that you want God to do. Now, I apologize that the information didn't get to us or to all of us, but this is what God will do. While you prepare for October's miracle service, which is on the 3rd, write the expectations from now. But before 3rd of October, some of you, those expectations would have become a testimony. Because I'm going to ask God to backdate it. It was supposed to be prayed for now. So those that came with expectations, I'm going to pray. And those that didn't come, write your request. Next miracle service, come with it. God is going to do wonders in our families. And in our lives in the name of Jesus. So if you wrote your prayer request, um, this is what you help me do. Before you leave, there should be a basket by the door. Just drop it there. I'm going to take it home and I'm going to pray over them. And then when you are coming next miracle service, for those of you who didn't come with it, write and bring. But before you come that miracle service, it would have been converted to a testimony. Amen. Lift your hands. I want to speak over your lives. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19, But thou shalt make my feet as the feet of the deer, and set me upon my high places. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone that has been down in any side of life whether in your career in your business in your academics in your spiritual life everyone that has been in a spiritual valley in the name of jesus the lord lifts you to your high places the lord lifts you to your high places in the name of jesus christ he says thou shalt make my feet like the feet of the deer i decree and declare from September down to December experience supernatural speed experience supernatural speed in the name of Jesus lift your hands I'm still praying I want to pray for your career those of you trusting God for promotion or trusting God for a new job this service was for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth before the 21st of this month I decree and declare, let your prayers be answered now. Let that promotion come to you now. I declare miracle jobs now. Miracle jobs now. In the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. I'm praying for businesses now. Your business is either dying or stagnant. It is either dying or even dead. Stagnant. You are even in debt now. By the power that raised Jesus from the grave. I declare that life comes to that business now. Life comes to that business now. 
and I declare a supernatural push for that business in the name of Jesus I speak prosperity upon that business I don't care whatever it is that you are doing I command it to prosper now I command it to prosper now in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray for our families I declare peace over every family every family going through any situation of chaos crisis disagreement affliction shakings here and there I decree and declare this is the ninth month of the year and at the ninth month a woman is due for delivery I declare that your season of peace has come I speak peace over your family I speak peace over the storms in the name of Jesus lift your hands and I decree and declare from today receive the grace for notable results receive the grace for notable results I declare notable result for you and your family members in the name of Jesus Christ raise your hands I'm still praying anyone that is into any kind of project building project business project any kind of project at all I decree and declare there is such a grace as pros to prosper there is such a thing as a grace to prosper the Bible says whatsoever he lays his hand to do that lady wearing jeans with eyeglasses at the window come can I pray for you come come quickly come in the name of Jesus he says whatsoever he lays his hand to do shall prosper from today nothing remains dead in your hands I declare that everything that your hands is committed to will prosper now for your project I declare the finishers anointing I declare the finishers anointing finish that building now finish that house now finish that project now finish that book that you are writing in the name of Jesus whatsoever he lays his hand to do shall prosper from today nothing dead in your hand will remain dead everything that is dying jacks back to life jacks back to life God is asking me to pray against debt I decree and declare by Jehovah Jireh the one who is more than enough anyone that is under any form of debt whether as a family or as an individual as a business or as a private individual I declare that within the next 21 days let there be supernatural debt cancellation supernatural debt cancellation be free of that debt now in the name of Jesus Christ finally can I pray for your spiritual life the very foundation of your success the bedrock of your existence ah there are two people I'm seeing that will come under the anointing now because a fire is coming on your prayer life one is at the overflow I'm seeing one at the overflow I see two people for a long time you have been struggling spiritually but today the fire of God is coming upon you now you hear a shout and in the name of Jesus I pray by extension anyone whose prayer life has been frustrated or is dead by reason of manipulations you are so busy you don't have time I declare let prayer fire fall upon your altar now let prayer fire fall upon your altar Help us. let prayer fire fall upon your altar in the name of Jesus I decree and declare an insatiable appetite for the study of God's word an insatiable appetite for the word of God an insatiable appetite for prayer in the name of Jesus Christ please lift your hands you will love this prayer I'm about to pray beyond your spiritual exercise beyond your effort beyond your struggles I pray by the grace of the covenant I have with God may the Lord shift someone here to new dimensions of the spirit I said beyond your sacrifice beyond your exercise beyond your labors step into a new dimension in the spirit new dimensions of grace new dimensions of grace 
new dimensions of the anointing, new dimensions of revelation. Step into it now. Step into it now. Step into it now. Father, anyone that has a ministry on their life, this is the ninth month of the year. That anointing that is on you will begin to manifest. Listen, this prayer is not for everybody. You are here, you know you are anointed, but somehow you are not seeing the manifestation. Help them at the back. You, are not, you don't seem to see the workings of God around your life. Fire comes upon you now. I command your grace to begin to manifest now. I command that anointing to be provoked now. Manifest now. Manifest now. Help them. Just help them outside. Your life will never remain the same. Your life.